Chapter 4 is going to take a look at how we can use the derivative in various contexts and applications. The first one is what are called related rates. And so our question we're going to answer is how are rates of change That's a derivative, a rate of change. How are they related to each other? And this is what brings up this idea of related rates. And basically, a related rate means two things are changing, but they're changing in relationship to one another. One increases at a certain rate, and it makes the other one increase or decrease at a certain rate. The best example of this is if you think about filling up a balloon. Let's say if we have a spherical balloon. that is filled with air at a rate of 3 cubic inches per second. We want to know how fast is the radius changing. when the radius is 4 inches. As we solve these related rate problems, the radius of the balloon is related to the amount of air in it. As we solve these problems, we're going to go through kind of a four-step process. The first step is going to be to draw a picture with the related formulas. So we're talking here about a sphere. So we'll draw our little spherical balloon here. And the radius of r. And we're talking specifically about the volume or how much stuff is in this circle. And we can look up, or we might know the formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. Once we know that relationship, we're ready for the second step, which is to take the derivative with respect to time. So if I were to take the derivative of this guy, we're going to have to use implicit differentiation because time t is not a variable here. So v, the derivative of v is just 1 dv dt is equal to and we 4 thirds and pi are constants. And we know we can use our exponent rule on the 3, bringing the 3 out front and reducing it by 1, so r squared. And then times the derivative of r, which is dr dt. This one's kind of nice because the 3's are going to divide out. So we really say dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. And now that we have our derivative with respect to time, let's plug in what we know. And I can't quite fit it all on the screen, so hopefully you have it on your notes. We're going to plug in what we know. And what we know is that the volume is increasing at a rate of 3 cubic inches per second. That is the change in volume with respect to time. 
We also know that the radius is currently 4 inches. It's not changing with respect to time. It's at this moment exactly 4 inches. So when we come down to plug in dv dt, the volume is changing at a rate of 3 cubic inches equals 4 pi r, the radius we said was 4 inches, squared dr dt. And then all we have to do is solve for the remaining rate, or dr dt, the change in the rate with respect to time. So simplifying, 4 squared is 16 times 4 is 64 pi dr dt. And then we can get the dr dt, or the change in the radius with respect to time. How fast is that radius changing? By dividing 3 by the 64 pi. And then we have 3 over 64 pi inches per second is the rate that radius is changing when it's exactly 4 inches long and the volume is increasing at 3 cubic inches per second. Let's try another related rate problem. Let's say we have a 7-foot ladder that is sliding down the wall. And we know that the top is sliding down at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. We want to know how fast is the bottom moving. along the ground. When the bottom is 6 feet from the wall. Let's draw a picture to get a better idea of this. We've got a building, the ground, and there is this ladder that's leaning against them. The problem is that ladder is sliding down the wall at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. We know the ladder itself is 7 feet long. And the moment we're interested in is the fact that we are 6 feet from the wall. And if we call this other side A, we don't know what A is, but we're going to be able to find that pretty quick. The big thing, though, that we know, we know that the formula for any right triangle is that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we can take the derivative of this with respect to time. We have 2a times the change in a with respect to time, or dA dt, plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dC dt. Then let's go ahead and plug in what we know and see what we come up with. We can actually figure out how long a is using the same Pythagorean theorem. 7 squared is equal to 6 squared plus a squared, or a squared plus 6 squared equals 7 squared. a squared is 36. a squared plus 36 equals 49. So a squared is equal to 13. A is the square root of 13. So at this moment, up the wall, we're the square root of 13 high. 
So plugging that into the formula, we have 2 times a, which is the square root of 13, times the change in a with respect to time. We know that a is going down, so we're going to say it's negative to represent the downward motion. And it's moving down at a rate. The change with respect to time is negative 1.5 plus 2b. b is the bottom of 6 times the change in b with respect to time. And we don't know how fast this ladder is moving out. That's what we're looking for, the db dt. Equals 2c. c is 7 feet. But how fast is c, the ladder's length, changing? Well, if we think about a ladder sliding down a wall, that ladder is not changing length at all. It's always going to be 7 feet long, whether it's completely against the wall, completely against the ground, or anywhere in between. There's no change in the ladder's length, so we'll use 0 for that length. When we clean this up, then, we end up with negative 3 square root of 13 plus 12 db dt equals 0. And this is going to solve quite nicely for us. Add the 3 root 13 to both sides. We get 12 db dt equals 3 square roots of 13. Divide both sides by 12. And the change in b of the base with respect to time is equal to 3 root 13 over 12. And what's nice is the 3 over 12 reduce. So for our final rate, this ladder is moving square root of 13 over 4 feet per second when the ladder is 6 feet from the wall. Let's try another example. Let's say a camera is 2,000 feet from a rocket. that fires vertically. And when this rocket is 500 feet in the air, its velocity that means speed, but with direction, is 400 feet per second. The cameraman needs to know what is the needed rate of change of the angle of the camera. Let's draw a picture to kind of get an idea of what's going on. We've got a little camera here. That's my camera, which is 2,000 feet away from the launch point for a rocket. That's my little rocket. It's going to go up in the air. And the camera is going to change angles so that it can watch that uh, rocket no matter how high it gets. We need to come up with an equation that relates these variables. Well, since we're dealing with an angle and the sides opposite and adjacent, we should know that the tangent of that angle is equal to the height over the 2,000 feet, the opposite over the adjacent. Then we can take the derivative of that. Actually, let's save ourselves a little bit of work. Before we take the derivative, let's multiply both sides by 2,000 so we don't have to worry about the fraction. It's just a constant, so it's not going to make much difference. Now let's take the derivative of that. And the derivative is going to be 2,000 secant squared of theta 
with respect to time, so we have to say dt d theta, using that implicit differentiation, equals the derivative of the height is dh dt. So now we can plug in what we know. First, we need to figure out what secant squared of theta is. Secant of theta, you remember, is 1 over the cosine of theta, or the reciprocal of cosine. If cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, the reciprocal. We already know the adjacent side is 2,000. We just need to find the hypotenuse side. We're interested in the moment where the height is 500 feet. Fortunately, the quadratic formula can tell us that 2,000 squared plus 500 squared is going to be equal to c squared. If I were to do that on my calculator, we would get 425 with four zeros after it equals c squared. And so if I take the square root, c is approximately equal to 2061.55. So 2061.55. So plugging in what we have, we've got 2,000 times the secant, which is the hypotenuse, 2061.55, over the adjacent, which is 2,000 squared. Oops, I just realized I got a small error up here. It should be d theta dt. We're taking the respect to time. The change in the angle with respect to time is what we're solving for. The change in the height, we know the height is increasing at 400 feet per second. The change in the height is 400 feet per second. Then we start multiplying this out. We will do the 2,000 times 2061.55 over 2,000 squared. When I do all of that, I get 2125 approximately. d theta dt equals the 400. So the change in the angle with respect to time after I divide is 400 over 2125, which if I divide that, I get 0.1882 radians per second. So when this rocket is 500 feet in the air, the camera needs to be changing its angle at 0.1882 radians per second. Let's do one last example of these related rates. Finding an equation that relates the rates, taking a derivative with respect to time, plugging in what we know, and solving. Let's say I have a funnel, and water is draining from it. Water is draining. From a cone-shaped funnel at a rate of 0 0.25 cubic feet per second. The height of the funnel is 3 feet. And the radius at the top is 2 feet. But we're not interested in the funnel. We want to know about the water. At what rate? is the height of the water changing
when the height is 1 foot. Well, let's draw a picture of our funnel. Here's our funnel. Water's leaking out. It's not full, though, so here's the water level. The funnel itself, we know, is 3 feet high. The radius on the funnel is 2 feet. That's a constant, so we'll label those constants. We know water is coming out at 0.025 feet per second. So we'll call that negative 0.25 feet per second, cubic feet per second. It's a volume. And we're interested specifically in the water. We don't really know the radius and the height, because that's going to change. Those aren't constant. But what we do know is an equation about the volume of that water. You might have to look it up, or we might know that the volume of a cone is 1 3rd pi r squared times the height. The problem we have is we end up with three variables. And so if we were to take the derivative, we'd have three rates of change, the change in the height, the change in the radius, and the change in the volume. We want to reduce that down to 2. So it's a little more manageable. Fortunately, if we were to draw a line down the middle, you see we end up with triangles that make up kind of the right side. A big triangle with a height of 3 and a length of 2, and a small triangle with a height of h and a radius of r. Those triangles, because they both have a right angle and share an angle, are similar triangles. So their sides must be proportional. In other words, if we set up the radius divided by the height on the little triangle, it would be the same on the big triangle, a radius of 2 divided by the height of 3. And we can solve this for r really quickly by multiplying by h. r is equal to 2h over 3. And so let's plug that in to our radius. That's going to reduce out the radius variable. Because we really don't care about the radius. We care about the height. And we care about the volume of the water decreasing. We've got height and we've got volume. We do not have anything about the radius. So let's stick with that pattern. So our volume is 1 3rd pi times the radius, which is 2h over 3 squared times h. And actually, let's go ahead and simplify that. We got 1 3rd pi times 2 squared is 4. h squared over 3 squared is 9 times the height. And so our final formula that connects the variables of the height and the volume Oops, not 1 third. Let's multiply. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 9 is 27. So we've got 4 pi over 27 times the height cubed. Now that we have our formula connecting our variables, we'll take the derivative. The derivative of v is 1 dv dt, the change in the volume with respect to time. 4 pi over 27 is a constant, but the derivative of h cubed is h squared with the 3 out front times dh dt. Let's go ahead and simplify. 3 over 27 is 9. So dv dt is equal to 4 pi over 9 h squared dh dt. Let's come over here to the side and plug in what we know. dv dt, that's the change in the volume with respect to time. We said the volume was decreasing at 0.25 
cubic feet per second, decreasing so it's negative. 0.25 is equal to 4 pi over 9. The height that the moment we care about, the moment we care about is 1 feet. So we're going to put 1 in for our height at the moment we care about, squared. dh dt, that's what we're looking for, the change in the height with respect to time. So we have negative 0.25 is equal to 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 pi over 9 dh dt. And so to get dh dt alone, we multiply by 9 over 4 pi times the negative 0.25. And the change in height with respect to time is equal to approximately putting that in the calculator, negative 0.17914 feet per second. In other words, at that moment, the height is decreasing by point, almost 0.18 feet per second. And that's how we're going to handle these related rates. We're going to take a look at drawing a picture, finding a formula that relates the variables of interest, the variables that are changing specifically. Then we'll take the derivative with respect to time implicitly. And then we'll plug in what we know and solve for what we don't know. Give a couple of those some practice on the assignment, and we will see you in class to discuss this further.